Now I know why they put the why in Genesis, because the producers knew that the audience was going to be asking why this movie was made. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop now. Terminator Genesis is the fifth installment in the Terminator franchise and is somewhat of a reboot just like everything else in 2015 for it is trying to start a new story with a new cast and such. However, this is a retcon of the original Terminator film, whereas John Connor in the year 2029 sends Kyle Reese back to the year 1984 to save a young Sarah Connor from a Terminator. But it's different in this movie because someone in the future sends a T-800 further into the past to when Sarah Connor was a child to save her from a T-1000 and father her so she can become a soldier at an earlier age, thus creating an alternate time stream that Kyle Reese is introduced to. Now, going into this film, I was somewhat hesitant because of, like, what was going on marketing-wise. It seems that the trailers gave away a lot in the movie, especially the second trailer, and going into this, I saw that a lot of the scenes from the second trailer were supposed to be surprises, which I didn't necessarily like, so if you haven't seen any of the trailers for Terminator Genesis, don't watch them. You can watch the first one just to get a better understanding of what's going on, but don't watch the second trailer because it's going to give a lot away. However, I was very open-minded going into this film because I absolutely love the Terminator series. I think Terminator 2 is probably one of the best films of all time, and I was just glad to be seeing a Terminator film after 2009. Terminator Salvation. So yeah, I was open-minded and uh, I, I couldn't wait to see the Terminator film. Now, I'm going to say all the stuff that I liked about the film. I, I mean, I didn't really necessarily like it, but I feel as though it's fair in a review to like state what you like about the film first. However, it's going to be a very short list. What I did like about the film is the uh, introduction of Genesis. What Genesis is, it's an iOS app that is created by Cyberdyne and it's essentially Skynet. What I liked about Genesis in the film is that it made it clear that like, uh, humanity is already succumbed to like technology and it's the truth in real life we're always constantly on our iPads and iPhones and that was present in the film which is something I caught on to and I was like wow that's actually very true I definitely liked how they incorporated the first film into this movie uh, there are a lot of familiar scenes in the movie especially when a T-800 goes back in time uh, it's uh, CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger he looks exactly like an Arnold Schwarzenegger from 1984 and all the shots are very familiar like I haven't seen the original Terminator in a while but like a lot of the things I saw in the movie were very familiar to me and I absolutely love just seeing those scenes again I think they did a really good job with capturing that however that's the only good thing about this movie is that it's taking elements from the first movie and presenting them into this one whereas the other factors which are new are kind of dull. I will say, however, bringing back Arnold Schwarzenegger as a T-800 was a smart idea. Arnold's really fun in this movie. I absolutely loved him. And I know a lot of people are complaining that like, he's a robot, why is he looking old? It was actually mentioned in Terminator 2 that the skin could heal. Like he has, uh, he was shot in the second one. And Sarah Connor asks him, are these uh, bullet wounds gonna heal? And he says, yes. So I'm thinking to myself, if skin can heal, skin can most likely age too. So yeah, I did not like that. Uh, so yeah, it was just cool seeing an Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the uh, Terminator franchise. He's really fun. I think, I, honestly, I think he's the most fun character in this film, which is kind of sad considering he's a robot. Amelia Clark as Sarah Connor or the revamped Sarah Connor because of the uh, time change. <sighs> okay, uh, I know there was a time change. I know there was like, a paradox and bleh, but I don't know. I just didn't like her performance as Sarah Connor. Um, so the original Sarah Connor was supposed to be a badass character. Uh, even though she was a woman, she did not take crap from anybody and she was solely focused on stopping Skynet. However, in this film, Amelia Clark's character is just kind of complaining because like she feels though she can't control her own life that she doesn't have a destiny because of this uh, T-800 coming back to save her. And I'm just thinking to myself, you, there is so much at stake here. The, a Skynet is a thing and you're worried about like your, your destiny. You're not going to have a destiny if Skynet takes over. There are much bigger things going on here. Jai Courtney as Kyle Reese. I really don't know what to say about Jai Courtney. Um, it seems like he is in a lot of terrible films, I'm not gonna lie, like, when I see a terrible film, he is always in it, and I can never decipher whether or not he is a bad actor, but 
I can now in this film, Terminator Genesis. He is a bad actor in this film. Uh, well, I don't know. It just seems like when he's talking to Sarah Connor or John Connor, that a lot of the dialogue that he is given, I don't know if he was even given dialogue. Uh, it, it seems like each of the scenes that he is talking to them, it's all improv. For example, one of the things that he says when talking to John Connor is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when an actor has nothing to say, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then you're obviously improving. Like, <laughs> ah. So yeah, I don't know if it was the acting or the dialogue that I didn't like about Jai Courtney in this film, but I just did not like him as Kyle Reese. It didn't really feel like Kyle Reese. It felt like he was a cocky character, whereas Kyle Reese is like a professional soldier in the original Terminator series. Jason Clark as John Connor. Okay, this is gonna be a hard thing for me to talk about without fanboying out here. Um, so Jason Clark, for the most part, as uh, John Connor, uh, especially in the future scene. By the way, the future scene was actually uh, a really nice touch in the film. It felt like something that James Cameron would have made, and I, I like the future scene a lot. So, um, like I said, a lot of the things from the first film that were present in this film, they did well in. It was just original stuff they were trying to bring in. It was kind of bad. For example, Jason Clark as John Connor. Now, when he is just John Connor... Uh, I, I feel as though he did a decent job as John Connor. The scars and everything were uh, pretty cool. Um, however, there is a scene, and this is like, this is supposed to be a surprise in the movie, but I guess I can talk about it because it was in the trailer. Um, there's a scene in the movie where he is taken over by uh, Genesis, I think, or, or Skynet at least, where he is taken over and he's essentially an upgraded version of a T-1000, and now he is a bad guy. You took John Connor and made him into a bad guy? I mean, I know I'm kind of fanboying out here, but like, that's a huge deal, especially in a big franchise like this. Like, that's essentially like taking Batman and turning him into a, a supervillain. Like, you just can't do stuff like that. Like, th these are characters that people have looked up to for uh, years now, and now that you're turning them against, like, the other cast members, it's like turning them against the audience. Like, that's just something I didn't necessarily like, and I it sucks for John Connor. Film-wise itself, the special effects in the film were great. The opening shot shows Judgment Day with, like, you know, the world being blown up. I thought that was really cool looking. Uh, then the future looked really cool looking. Like I said, the future part was, like, pretty cool looking. Now, they needed to just make a Terminator film just about the future, okay? I know they tried doing that with Terminator Salvation, but... You just need to have it set in the future with no elements of time travel whatsoever and you can have a good movie, okay? That's where Terminator Salvation failed was because they were trying to bring uh, Sam Worthington into the movie where they, they could have like easily focused on John Connor and fighting the Terminators, okay? So if the producers ever watch this review, all you have to do is make a Terminator movie set in the future with no time travel whatsoever, focus on John Connor, okay? and don't make it disgusting looking like Terminator Salvation. I will say that this film is entertaining. It's more entertaining than Terminator Salvation for sure, especially with Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the picture. And the story and the concept is pretty interesting too because I actually like films like Star Trek and X-Men Days of Future Past where they try and attempt to uh, uh, fix, you know, crappy sequels and like, you know, make a better reality in the, uh, in the franchises. Uh, so yeah, I, I like the, you know, time paradox films, it was just executed kind of poorly. The characters, the way they were talking, it just seemed like the dialogue was kind of dull. And I feel as though like, you know, with like two or three films, you have a lot to go on. Like this complicated relationships between the characters. For example, I was wondering how they were gonna handle this with Kyle Reese, you know, uh, protecting Sarah Connor as a soldier. And I kind of knew that Kyle Reese would eventually figure out as to whether or not he is John Connor's uh, father. And I just did not like how they approached that in the movie between Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese. The way that they approached it, it was like, I have a son? No. The way they approached it was just kind of, I want to say unprofessional. I guess they were trying to be funny, but it just didn't work. They approached it from an immature angle. And I feel as though this was actually probably the silliest Terminator film that I've ever watched. Because the Terminator films are actually quite serious and they have really cool characters in the film. Even with the sci-fi element, it's very gritty. The Terminator films are very gritty, whereas in this film, the sci-fi element is present, but there's an absence of grit and it's actually a very silly film. There are jokes that are not really funny and 
Yeah, like I said, concept-wise, the uh, movie was pretty cool. I like what they were trying to do, but I think they just executed it like pretty poorly. If you're a fan of the Terminator series, uh, you should go check out this film, but if you're going into this uh, thinking that like, you know, it's somewhat of a reboot, you'll enjoy it as a non-Terminator fan, I don't think you will. Uh, I think you need to be a fan to enjoy it. So yeah, guys, that was my review. It was good seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger back. However, it was just kind of a dull movie with dull characters with dull dialogue. And uh, I like the concept. I just kind of wish that it was uh, approached more uh, professionally. If you saw Terminator Genesis, comment down below what you thought of the movie. Like my review, share it, and please subscribe to Pixel Talk if you haven't yet. Thank you guys so much. I'm Corbin Stuckey, and this is Pixel Talk. I mean, look at this poster. It looks like Transformers Age of Extinction. You do not want your poster to look somewhat like Transformers Age of Extinction. That was like the worst film of 2014. And this poster, it looks worse than that knockoff Transformers film Transmorphers. That's not even like an actual film.